Hi everyone, my name is Sabah Khan. I'm an author, artist and architect and I'm the author of the graphic novel The Roles We Play which recently got awarded the Jalluk Prize for Best Literature. My choice for partition book is my own book, um, if I'm allowed to do that. Um, it's called The Roles We Play. It's a graphic novel. It starts off with um, partition as a starting point, but it talks about the long-term lasting effects of partition. So one of those is something that connects directly back to my family, um, which, will, which live in the region of um, Mirpur in Azad Kashmir. And the dam, Mangla Dam, that was built and displaced over 230 villages, uh, villages that then um, uh, encouraged a, a mass wave of migration to the UK um, in the 60s and 70s, um, is a direct um, consequence of partition, but people don't really talk about it and it's not really framed in that way. So um, my book really does that. It, it looks at this sort of long-term legacy of what partition has um, triggered across the years. Tip number one, build your own unique voice. All of us are unique individuals in this world and we all have our own take on how we perceive the world. Um, one of my tutors once said that we're all in this room together, but each of us has a unique vantage point and a unique view that is different from the person sitting next to us. So think of it like that way. What is your unique take on the world and build that as your voice? Tip number two is let it come slowly, build over time. So your story and the thing that you're trying to get across to the world might not happen straight away and it might happen in moments and bursts. So what I would suggest is let that happen the way it naturally will happen. My book, for example, it took me six years to do. So you just got to go with it, just ride with it. Tip number three is set your intentions with your craft. Be clear with yourself with what you want from it. Um, from, for me, um, my craft started on the side. It was something that I was doing whilst I was working full time in a design agency and it took me years to slowly build to the time where I could make it my full time occupation. And even then it was something that I questioned regularly. So for yourself, frame it for yourself, be realistic, ask yourself what is it that you really want from your craft and if it is a hobby, is it, if it is a thing on the side that um, gives you pleasure and gives you joy then it's okay to keep it that way as well and for it to not be the main breadwinner in your life. Tip number four is to build a support bubble around you. Now this was something that was really important for me. I had my close, my partner, my close friend, my mum as well, and a few key people in the graphic novel industry that really helped push me and gave me the constructive criticism at the times that I needed, but also like really believed in my work. And I think I needed that external validation to help me push forward and get to the point that I got to. So it is really important to find those people that push you forward and help you along the way. Tip number five is to be flexible and curious with your craft. So whether, whether that's writing or drawing or painting, allow yourself to look at different mediums, go out there and experience the world. So I often find going to exhibitions, going to poetry nights, even just seeing friends, going to the local petting zoo, things that give you stimulus from different aspects of your life, different dimensions, and get you to be more physical and um, I guess trigger different parts of your brain, really help to go back to your craft and bring in new angles. So it's really important to stay flexible and loose, allow those creative muscles to just, you know, not tense up. Tip number six is actually my favourite. It's to use tools to help you put things on, on paper when your um, creative juices are flowing. So I use tools like MindMap for brainstorming, Pinterest for visual storyboarding and visual references. I often use my phone for notes when I'm going around the tube and I've got suddenly have a spark or a sentence that comes to mind and I really wanna hold on to it. So use everything in your disposal to really start to capture the different moments that give you that energy and that give, you know elicit that sort of creative reaction because those really help for when things aren't going so well and you need that sort of push and that trigger to help you go back to where you like picked off from. So definitely use those. Tip number seven is take time out. 
it's really important when you're in the middle of a deadline or reaching a, uh, reaching a milestone that you take time out in that hot boxing environment. I tend to do this a lot when I'm like rushed off my feet and I'm really trying to pull things together. I'll stay in for days <laughs> on end and not leave. So I found that it's actually really important, really critical to get out there and just go for a walk, get an ice cream, meet my mum in the park. And I'll often use that to help me come back to my desk space um, and really just nail it. Tip number eight, slightly controversial, you don't have to enjoy it. Now that's something that I found I had a lot of pressure with. Um, my friends, my family, people around me were always like, oh, does it feel amazing to like get this stuff on the paper? And I was just like, no, it's actually really painful. Like, you know, you're reliving these really difficult scenarios and you're trying to unpick and make sense of it. So I think by the end of it, I was just like, you know what, actually I did it and it's incredible and it's really connecting with a lot of people. But that process you don't have to enjoy it and I think it's quite liberating to actually just let go of that pressure to have to enjoy it, to find pleasure in it and of course if you do find pleasure in it that's amazing but also equally if you're dealing, if you're talking about quite intense subject matters it's also okay to just let it be what it is. Tip number nine is to give yourself a structure that works for you. This was something that I identified really early on when I started my graphic novel, and it's something that allowed me to keep going six years on, you know, to, to actually know that I had um, a zoomed out picture of what I wanted to achieve and knowing that actually by the end of it, it will resolve itself and it will complete. Um, what I found really help, helpful was looking at existing, um, stro uh, existing story structures um, that are out there and identifying the one that really worked for me, and that really helped me to be really specific with what I wanted from my story so perhaps that will help you too. Finally the last but not least tip number 10 follow your gut follow your intuition follow your internal compass essentially it is your unique voice that is coming onto these pages and is doing what it's doing and you need to tap into what really truly it is that you're trying to say so really go into that and good luck.